Andrew, I know, is getting into his bikini for the weekend, so have a very good time. A hole in the elbow. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm also being at it. I think he's not kidding, you know, about that. Anyway, we've had to drag Charm and Danny in from the sun this weekend, but they are here, so welcome. Hey. Hey. Enough! We all give them more money, shut up. Actually, Charm, you're the disadvantage here. We've got the Danny Baker fan club tonight, so you better go ahead with your little story first. He's over right. there. <laughs> Right, yes, what's my story? Oh, yes, my story it was about the Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead. I don't know if anybody read it, but um, in the papers this week, but two patients found cockroaches in their stew. And when the, when the reporters went and asked the Royal Free Hospital about this, the catering manager, Mr James Chambers, said, if food containing cockroaches is cooked to the correct temperature, there is no health hazard. So then... <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you up to, Danny? Well, I, I, you know the other week I told a story about Cabbage Patch Dolls that it's found out to be untrue. Well, this is true because it happened to a <laughs> member of my immediate family, so don't all go... Nuh. This actually happened. My sister-in-law, Pat, hello to Pat and Brian out there in Goodyear Park. Uh, my sister-in-law, Pat, was going along Fleet Street and she heard... Ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum, and she's looking around and she looks around and by the Midland Bank, where on windows where you put your money, and there was nobody there and the window was down, but it was pumping out £10 notes. <laughs> Seriously. And so she's gone up, and up's come, the, you know, the window's up. By the time she's noticed it, about ten other it's people shocked. did. And none of them would be, like, bent enough to say to each other, well, shall we split it? And had to run it inside the bank. She didn't make a penny I don't out believe of it. that. Do you believe that? It's a fact. No. It's a fact. Definitely not a fact. Pat, ring up. Tell them it's true. <laughs> what is fact is that Wood Weekend is traditionally the time when J.R. Ewing fans start living the Dallas lifestyle. You may not have an oil company or a Cadillac, but if you've got a tenner for the barbecue and a few bob for sausages, then yeehaw! you can head out into the garden for a good old Western-style barbecue. Now, you might think that British barbecues were bound to end as a soggy anticlimax, but someone's convinced that we're a nation of barbecues because you can't walk into a DIY shop at the moment without falling over gross upon gross of barbecue sets. And this week sees the launch of this. Now, it's known as a disposable barbecue, so think about it. You need never be without a burnt hamburger or a charred chipolata ever again. But Andy Price has put on his pinny, and he is headed for the patio. Now this is everybody's idea of the perfect barbecue. This is what tempts you to part with your reddies and invest in a barbecue of your very own. Now, what they don't tell you is that when you buy one, you're also buying a load of trouble. The problems start at stage one. When you're doing the shopping, according to Jilly Cooper, that is. I have a theory about barbecues that they always, the butcher takes one look when you say you want a barbecue and he goes under the counter and produces the most disgusting geriatric yak. <laughs> <laughs> and even barbecue experts like Jim Marks know that cooking al fresco can be a hair-raising business. Take your eyes off your bangers for two ticks and they could jolly well go bang. What we have here is a classic <laughs> case of a flare-up just about to happen. The smoke's <coughs> gathering, the fat's dropping, and at a certain given moment in time, and I can't say when it will be, yes. there will be this whoosh, and we are, you know, starting to sort of repel all borders and call out the fire brigade. Ooh, yes, well, just the thing, <laughs> that makes one's food truly well done. But if it's all such a total culinary nightmare, why is barbecuing mania sweeping the country? Now, despite all the problems and palaver of barbecuing, there's one very good reason why it's catching on. It rings the very ancient bell, man the hunter, man the provider. Know what I mean? Oh, done to a turn. Perfect for you, mother-in-law. Have I told you about my operation? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it takes a macho man with a very cool head to grapple successfully with a griddle full of loin chops. And in deepest London, in the very heart of the suburban jungle, they reckon barbecuing is, well, altogether too risky to be left to the ladies. Jim, presumably this is a sort of male preserve, is it really? Definitely. The barbecue? Definitely. Women just not equal to it? No, dude. They can't stand the heat, the smoke, the pressure. A lot of pressure in this, thing. Oh, of course. Sure. So the lucky ladies are left to relax in the calm of the kitchen. Now, while the men reckon they're in command, the female of the species isn't quite so impressed with 
man the barbecuer. The last one that I went to, there was sort of smoke everywhere, and you couldn't really see the chef smoke. And, you know, the food wasn't too good either. He's <laughs> the barbecue. He's never managed to get the barbecue alight properly. <laughs> They usually stuff. just end up with a terrible smell of paraffin in the garden and we all go back indoors and eat salad. <laughs> I love this. I love it when the men suddenly get really macho and stripped to the waist and then everything gets burnt. <laughs> Sausages, ch hairy chest and things like that. I, mean, I, love the, I love the smell of singeing from the hairy chest. <laughs> None of this comes as much of a surprise to the real experts in the barbecuing world, the Aussies. Barbie-loving Australian Don Attio reckons we just haven't got what it takes. I think the real reason is, is the inherent meanness of the English. It truly comes out in barbecues. I mean, in, if you compare it to Australia, in Australia, a, a, a family barbecue is when you throw a sheep on and if you have a few friends around, you throw a bullock on. And if you have a lot of friends, you throw on something really big like Clive James. <laughs> when you twist their arms, British barbecuers have to admit that in the barbecue steaks, the Aussies leave us standing. I mean, they eat on the beach in Christmas, don't they? They, they go out on a beach in Chris Bondi. They have steaks and God knows what else. What can we do here? I mean, who wants to go to South End, knee-deep in mud, and chomp on a chop? <laughs> but we're not all whinging poms. For the real men among us, barbecuing isn't about food at all. We do it for the glory of grappling with the elements. And... and, 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 and